Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are familiar with me, then you obviously are a big fan of zines and you like my zine content. But if you're new here, I'm Brie and I make zines. And today I wanna to give you guys a tour of some of the zines that I made this year. A lot of people have asked for a zine tour of the zines that I've made and I had a really hard time choosing which ones to show you guys. So then I was like, oh, I will just show you one for every month of this year. So obviously I've made way more zines per month than I'm going to show you but I thought it would just be a good idea to show you the highlights of each month so without further ado let's get started All right, so the first one is a New Year resolution zine. This was handmade, meaning I created this by using glue and different paper and writing and just really going all in with the collaging on these ones. Um, I also created some stuff on my iPad and then printed it out and taped it into the zine. But this was one of the first zines I made in 2023. I made this for my zine club on Patreon. So if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's just a little community where people can pay a membership to see exclusive content. So that's where I post exclusive zines and I also send these out in the mail. So it's really, really fun way to be more connected with the people that support me. They were able to get this new year resolution zine and then I also made them a guided zines. In the first one, as you can see, all the tape and it's really messy. When you make a zine like this, by hand and it has all these collaging aspects and tape and stuff like that. This is called a master copy. So you make this as the raw master copy and then you make copies of this using your scanner or you can go to FedEx or Kinkos or something like that to make copies. So this one is called In 2023 I Will and basically I wanted to go for a 2023 goals zine to hold myself accountable right and i think safe to say that i i met all my goals this year but i'll just go through it with you guys so it says happy new year zine club 2023 is here and it's time to take stock of what's important to us whether you subscribe to making new year's goals or not i think the start of a new year is a great time to highlight what we can improve on this month's zine is focused on how we can grow this year I hope you enjoy the, the guided zine I included for you to get clear on what you'd like to work towards. I believe in you and I love you. Happy zine making love Brie or ex Brie, which I recently found out that means kiss, I think. And I, I, I put ex Brie on everything. So I hope people are not offended by that, that I'm, I'm sending them kisses through my zines. I always thought it meant love, but anyway. So it starts off with a doodle I made. So like I said, a lot of this is collaging. So you can see that I pasted this in here. I taped it, but I drew this on my iPad and just printed it out and put it in my zine. It says, in 2023, I will take more breaks. Although social media is part of my job, I will step away to recharge. It will make my work even better. And safe to say, I did do that. It took me to the end of 2023 to take a substantial break, but I did take more breaks this year than I did last year. I was overworking myself last year trying to post content. So this year I really took it slow and I think I took like the last two months off basically from making content to just focus on my shop. If you guys don't know, I have my own art shop that I sell my zines and other stuff online. So I've been focusing on that more, which t helped me take a step back from content, which was, it's not draining, it's just a lot of work. So I was happy that I actually met this goal. And then, oh, the centerfold. I drew this a couple of years ago, actually. I just didn't know what to do with it. So I ended up putting it into this zine for one of my goals. And it says, in 2023, I will learn to be less petty, less. I'll still be a little petty, come on, I'm human. <laughs> so I drew this girl with like fire in her eyes and fire behind her because she's being really petty. And you know what? This year I was less petty. I, I did get into some disagreements and some tiffs and I did go through, <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of sinuses, sinus problems right now, so I'm a little stuffy, but I had a, um, some disagreements, some fights. I went through a breakup, so I think this year I handled everything pretty maturely. I will also say that I met this goal. I'm happy that I'm <laughs> reviewing this and, and noticing that I did have some growth this year, so. The next one, in 2023, I will get back into roller skating and take better care of my physical health. That means eating more greens and cutting out soda and beer. So, I met one half of this goal. I did <laughs> improve my physical health by skating more. So I drew this, it's roller skates. And then in the back, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's like these little ugly monsters drinking soda and beer 
which is what I was trying to cut out and it just symbolizes that because I've I don't have the best diet when it comes to alcohol and um, I didn't successfully cut out that I mean I did I did drink less of it but I still drank it and I think I was trying to trying really hard to cut back substantially but you know what I don't get nasty drunk anymore I don't get blackout drunk anymore so I guess that's that's improvement okay baby steps baby steps and then this is the last page it says in 2023 I will say yes to more social events being on the spectrum I often shy away from going out because I easily get overstimulated this year I will make an effort to put myself out there more this includes doing more zine fest more coffee dates more business contracts and more family time and I will say that I did successfully meet this goals so I didn't do more coffee dates but I did date more and the dates were actually better than coffee dates. I got to know some people pretty well, pretty intimately. It was it was fun. It's it, it was new for me. Um, more business contracts. I did have a lot more business this year, which is awesome. It makes me look forward to 2024 and hopefully being able to maintain those business relationships and have more business in 2024 and more family time. A lot more family time this year. I actually was getting along with my parents a lot better than I have in the past. So I'm actually really happy with how 2023 turned out, and I'm glad I was able to like to document it in this zine for my zine club it also got this guided zine I wanted to make this to help my readers figure out how to approach the new year too I didn't want to tell them all my goals and just be like here's what I'm doing you know I also wanted to help them too because we do have a relationship and I, it's very important to me so I made this for them and it starts off with how they can list different ways to improve their health whether that's mental health physical health emotional health I just put some grid paper in there so they can jot down five things hopefully they did follow it and if you are in my zine club and you're watching this hopefully you can look back on the zine right now and see how many of these things that you met how how were you able to improve your health this year you know the next page in 2023 I will do hard hard things so I made another list for them it says what are things that scare me how can I confront them so for example one of mine was doing more social events and socializing more that was a little scary for me it's easy for me to be behind a camera or in front of a camera and talk to you guys because it gives a little buffer there you know where I don't have to read social cues I don't get so caught up in my head looking at the other person's expressions and trying to read them so that was something that honestly freaks me out so I practiced that more and I was able to get a better understanding understanding of other people by socializing more. So that was just an example of mine. Hopefully they were inspired by that and were able to put things in here that scare them and what are the ways that they can confront those things. This was very fun to make. I think it's very simple and I hope that you guys can see that because it's handmade, it's so accessible for anybody of any age. You know, you don't have to have an iPad. You don't have to have Procreate. You can just take a sheet of paper and collage just like this. So if I unfold it, you'll see that it's actually just one sheet of paper that I collaged and wrote all over. I folded it up and distributed. I um, already did an entire zine reading for this zine called I Choose You, which I will link in the description. I made the zine as a submission for an essay contest, and I actually won the contest. And the contest was to be able to go to a roller skate camp. If you don't know, I'm really into roller skating. And this camp was built to help skaters improve skills for, you know, if you like to ramp skate, if you like to street skate, it was going to teach you all those things. So this zine was my submission and that's a picture of me roller skating on the beach with my friends and I also put in the skate prompt or sorry not the skate prompt but the essay prompt so the people that are reading this know that I'm serious about submitting an essay I didn't want them to think I was just making up my own rules I was breaking the rules a little bit but I did include the essay prompt because I wanted them to know what the zine was going to be about you know I didn't want them to think that they were going to waste their time with it so <laughs> You know, writing an essay just seemed really boring to me, even though I'm an English major and I have a degree in English. I just could not make myself sit down and write an essay. So I decided to do this instead. If you want to know all the context for why I made this zine and want to hear me read the entire zine from beginning to end, definitely check out that zine reading that I'll link. And like you can see here, I make most of my zines by hand. I know you guys probably see a lot of digitally made zines, like zines that are made on like Procreate or Photoshop and just printed out straight from that for digital format. Those are awesome. And I love that things are so accessible now that people can make them digitally. And I do make digital zines too, but traditionally zines are made by hand, just like this through collaging and with stickers and tape and glue and it's really messy. And then you make photocopies of it to distribute. So I like to stick 
to this classic way of making zines because it helps me feel closer to my work. And that's just a pres personal preference, you know? I think it's so incredible that times have changed so much that we have all these options to create zines. I definitely, like I said, make zines with my iPad too, but my favorite way to make zines is slowly with my hands. And I think this is a great example of that because if you look at all the details, this is a picture I printed out. I did print some stuff out from my phone and then I went in and collaged, did some doodling, wrote with my own handwriting. I think this is a great way to show people a piece of your personality, whether you're making zines like I did for a contest or if you're just making zines for fun or for your friends or for your shop or to trade or to give out for free. This is a great way to showcase your art style, I think. But the way that I collaged it together and presented my information is very artistic to me. I think it's very creative. And this is a great way to be able to showcase what you're all about. And like I said earlier, I do enjoy exploring digital zine making, and here's a great example of that. I made this mini zine on my iPad. If you're interested in making a zine that way, I do have a template that you can upload into Procreate or Photoshop, which I'll link in the description under, um, it'll say free zine resources, so you can go check that out. Anyway, I made the zine in March after going through a really tough time. I was feeling really lonely around this time, and it made me self-reflect on what it means to live a solitary life as an artist. So because I'm so invested in my career, I can struggle with personal relationships or sometimes I even choose not to center relationships at all just because I'm so invested in my art. This zine was created after ruminating over my choices to be alone, to focus on my career, and I was surprised that a lot of people resonated with it. So this zine is called I Have Never Had an Original Experience and on the cover there's a frog with a cowboy hat on. So it opens up and it says, I add Reddit after every super specific question I search on Google. And then there's a frog looking at a laptop, which I just found online. And then I made it into kind of like this threshold graphic. I don't know if you could see it, but there's like little dots. So I made it look kind of, I guess, retro or something. I don't know. I just tinker around with the effects on Procreate. So I can't really explain why I did that. I just thought it looked cool like that. So then the frog is thinking as he's searching up on the laptop, is it normal for my teeth to feel itchy after biting into an apple? Reddit. And that is a real search I made because I, I don't know, when I bite into apples or if I bite into fruit, really, it makes my gums itchy. But I think for a long time, I thought it was my teeth. And then I figured out there's a term for that. There's, there's, if you deal with this too and you bite into like acidic things and it makes your teeth feel kind of numb, there is a term for it. I totally forgot, but <laughs> I ended up searching that on Reddit. And then the next page says, the internet never fails to show me that I am not unique. Someone has always been there, done that. Any idea I've had has been thought before. Every joke has been told all stories have been written. And there's another threshold kind of image that I made. I found another cool frog photo online and I just converted it to have a bunch of little dots. So typically this threshold thing is used when you're trying to screen print because when you push ink through a screen, it all it's doing is pushing ink through a bunch of little tiny dots to make a bigger picture. And maybe at the point, I'm, I'm like trying to justify why I thresholded it or her thresh, thresholded it. I don't know, but <laughs> maybe I think I was making a shirt. Oh, that's what it was. You know what? I am realizing I actually made a shirt of this. The zine came first, then the shirt. Yeah, there we go. So I think that's why I was tinkering around with it because I thought maybe I would end up putting one of these on a shirt, but I ended up putting this on a shirt, so. <laughs> See, my zine process is very messy. It's very weird. And the last page, it says, I have never had an original experience. And how beautiful is that? To know I'm never alone. And then a bunch of cool little frogs. Another thing I just found online and I converted it into a threshold image or a screen print image. And that's it. Okay, so this next scene I don't have a physical copy of, so I'm going to insert a video of what it looks like. It's called a flexagon, the type of um, fold that it is, it's called a flexagon, but I coined the term flexazine because I think it's a cool fold that we can incorporate into our zine work. So the magic of this paper craft is that when you fold it, it reveals different parts of itself. And I made this in April as a commission for a client, actually. As an artist, another way I make income is by making stuff for other people and they pay me for my skills. So so someone reached out to me about making a gift for their friend whose favorite movie is Raising Arizona starring Nicolas Cage and this is what I came up with. What kind of name is it for a pretty thing like you? Short boy Edwina, turn to the right! You're a flower you are. Just a little desert flower. 
let me know how those come out. And they were really thrilled with the results, so it was a satisfying project. I don't have the physical copy because, like I said, that was a commission, so I only made one copy. I do have the PDF on my computer, but I just wanted to be able to conserve paper in that way and just show you the video so you can see how it works in tandem with the sound of the movies. But if you want to know how to make them yourself, I did host a workshop a few months ago where I teach you step-by-step -step how to make your own flexagon. And I will also link that in the description under the free resources so you guys can learn how to do that yourself too. We're in the month of May and this is a zine that I made in the month of May. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen my photo dump zines, which are zines I make to recap my month. And it's sort of like scrapbooking and then you just highlight the most memorable moments of that month. And back in May, I made this mini zine to capture all the memories that really touched me. And it starts off with one of my favorite memories of the month of May. If you're not familiar with my work, I do a lot of stuff. I have a lot of streams of income and one of the ways that I make income is by vending. So vending means that I have a table full of the stuff that I sell in my shop online and then I just present it in real life. So it's called vending, it's also called markets, it's also called pop-ups, but I do that pretty much every weekend. And I was popping up at outside of a bookstore and someone came up to me and showed me that they got a tattoo of my art so this is a picture i drew it's a banana with a ball gag in their mouth and it's in one of my zines i have a kinky fruit zine and if you're interested in that it's in my shop but this awesome person came up to me and showed me that they got it tattooed and usually just you know to give you guys a little bit of uh information about artists it's common courtesy or it's actually I wouldn't say common courtesy because a lot of people don't know this, but it's really respectful to ask the artist for their permission before you get their work tattooed. I don't care. If you see something of mine that you like and you want to put that on your body forever, do it. You don't have to ask me permission. You don't have to pay me a tattoo ticket unless you want to. I know a lot of people reach out to me and they are willing to pay to be able to get things tattooed on them. That's great. That's very supportive of me. I appreciate that. But I'm just telling you here right now, you don't have to do that. You can do what this girl did and just go for it just get it tattooed i thought this was amazing so i put this in the, in my photo dump zine of the month of may as one of the highlights they got a zine tattoo i don't <laughs> i don't know about you but i think that's really awesome and then it continues on I did some other stuff in May. There's some uh, moments I had with some friends. We were playing Uno outside of another friend's house. This was really fun to me because I love hanging out because I'm so busy all the time and so focused on like content and doing pop-ups and like I said, all my other streams of income. So to be able to do stuff like this and slow down and have fun and play something as simple as a card game was really special to me. So I put this in the zine. And then also in the month of May was the LA Zine Fest. If you guys aren't familiar with that, it's just a zine fest hosted in Los Angeles. And I was able to go, <laughs> I don't know if you could see me there. And I met so many people and so many people said that they watch my videos and they learned about zines for me. That was so special. So of course that had to make it in the zine too. And that's it. So for June, I made this a fun little gift for Father's Day. It's a 16 page zine compiled with text from my dad. And me and my little sister actually collaborated on the zine to gift him for Father's Day and he really liked it. And as you can see, we just used some post-it notes, some pens, you know, to write inside of it, printed out text from our dad and just made it interactive. And what I really like about this is that it's 16 pages, but it's created from just using one sheet of paper. So like I said earlier, if you're interested in any of these folds, I do link them all down in the description. I have a tutorial for how to make a 16 page zine like this. And I also include a template in case you need to know the numbering and everything, all the technical stuff. I, I take care of that for you. So make sure to look in the description for this. This zine is called Why Are You Yelling? A Zine of Text from Dad by Brie and Calais and Clay is my little sister. And we put all these texts that he sent us where he's kind of yelling. I don't know if that's like a parent thing, if you guys can relate to that, but here's a couple of texts that he sent over the years and almost every single one he's yelling. This one I thought was cute. He sent me, that's me and my dad when I was younger. I don't know how old I was there, but we were doing arts and crafts together and I sent him this picture and I was like, cute. And he said, yes, you are. And I was like, finally you text back, I think. I don't know, it was like all day or something. He's like, yeah, I just read it. I mean, I just got it. Where did you go? And all the exclamation, or not the exclamations, all the question marks. 
when my dad makes food and he wants somebody to try it, he says he needs a taste tester. I thought that was cute. <laughs> Okay, the zine for July has a very interesting story. So back in July, I was having a bit of a creative block. I was struggling to find cool ways to make zines and I was getting bored of the kind of work I was creating. So I was trying to shake it up. And in order to do that, I ended up posting a selfie I, on Instagram and I left a caption, something like, you know, leave a comment under this photo and I'll pick a random person to make a zine about. And a lot of people ended up commenting and I literally just went under the photo, went through all like 700 comments and just randomly landed on one. And then I was able to stalk that person's Instagram to make a zine about them. So I got their permission. If they were com commenting under that, they knew what I was gonna do. Cause I think the caption actually said I was gonna stalk them and make a zine about what I found. So I ended up picking this random person named Jesse, who's actually really, really cool. So the reason it's called Jesse's Not So Boring Zine is because the comment I landed on was from Jesse and it says, I'm boring, but maybe a boring zine works. And after going through their Instagram, they were far from boring. But I noticed that people with the most talent or the most zest for life sometimes could be a little self-critical. And that's exactly what the case was with Jesse. Jesse has really no reason to feel boring at all because going through their Instagram, I found that they loved a lot of things about art and they had a lot of hobbies. So I ended up making this and that's actually thread and needle because Jesse experimented with crocheting and, and knitting and stuff. So I made Jesse's name out of the yarn or out of the thread, which was really hard to do. I don't know if you can see that, but I used double stick tape to kind of shape it. A little complicated, but I was, I was inspired by Jesse's hobbies and I wanted to be able to make a title that kind of summed up what Jesse was about. And Jesse's a very creative person. That's Jesse, oops. <laughs> And I really like Jessie's hair, it was purple, so I used a lot of Karomi stickers just because it kind of meshed well with her hair. Oh, and this is another interesting thing about Jessie is that she owns her own art shop. Her art shop is called Art School Dropout and she makes these cool shirts for adults and for kids. So the adult one says, Crafty Bitches Club, we will cut you. And it has a pair of scissors on it. And the kids one says, Crafty Kids Club, we may accidentally cut ourselves, which I thought was really cute. And then this pullout tab just shows an example of someone wearing the shirt, just in case anyone was interested to see how it looks like on a person. So I included that. I thought that was like a fun little addition. And then on the next page, it shows Jesse welding. So that was another one of their hobbies that they ended up trying out and they really enjoyed. And this was a caption under the photo. So this is not me saying this, this was Jesse saying this. It says, this past weekend, I had the pleasure of scratching off yet another skill on my must learn list welding and so it shows her with her purple hair so awesome so I put more chromey stickers and then my sum up of my stock on Jessie was from my stock session I learned that Jessie is far more than what she makes Jessie is also a dedicated mom she's curious and crafty she's interesting and generous and definitely not boring and that's how it ends it just says thank you Jessie a mini zine by Brie I use grid paper and like I keep telling you guys, I always tend to default to making my zines by hand. So this is washi tape. I think I took a highlighter and highlighted this whole page. And oh, there's another tab. Oh, <laughs> it's just uh, a kid wearing this shirt. So I had the adult version and the kid version. I kind of forgot about that. So there's more tape. I think these are magazine clippings. I printed out photos of Jesse, obviously. And that was the zine for July. Here's another zine I made exclusively for my zine club on Patreon. So only a hundred copies of this exist. And I'm kind of glad because this zine was created while I was going through a breakup. So it's kind of vulnerable. And I used a bunch of collaging in this. I printed out a lot of pictures and a lot of it has my handwriting in it, handwriting in it as well. As you can see here, I wrote this. There's even like a eraser. So this is the master copy. I think I explained what a master copy was before. So I, made everything really rough on this master copy and then made copies with my scanner and there's washi tape i really love karomi i love sanrio so i ended up using some pink and purple washi tape to kind of go what it, what's the word i'm looking for to be the opposite of this page because it's all black and white so i try to add a pop of color in there and that's a picture of me 
and I put made it black and white. It says, I make zines because therapy is expensive, which is kind of like a intro to what the zine will be about. You don't really need context to read a per zine. It's kind of like a diary in that way. So a per zine, if you're not familiar, is just short for personal zine. So this is definitely a per zine. I talk about things that pertain to my life, my lived experiences, my feelings. And that's definitely what I was doing in this zine from beginning to end. It was very deep, I guess you could say. And not deep in the way of like, ooh, look at how insightful I am. It was just very raw. And so I talk about parasocial relationships, a lot of stickers. Zine making involves a lot of stickers. And then <laughs> just a little meme that I made and some writing, which is basically just like a journal entry. So you could definitely do that in your zines. I messed up a little bit, so I had to black out some parts. So th that's what is so cool about zines is that they're very messy, very raw. They don't have to be perfect. You know, I could have used white out, but I guess I didn't have any on hand, so I didn't use it. And this is, oof, this was like <laughs> so vulnerable. So this was like an email. So for context, the month before, because this is, um, a zine I made in August. So the month before in July, I chose to leave a relationship that just wasn't working for me. And like I mentioned earlier when showing you my froggy zine, I, or was it the froggy zine? I, I mentioned something earlier about refusing to center anyone in my life that's not benefiting it. So living that solitary life as an artist. I love my art and maybe that makes me selfish. Maybe I don't have a good balance of work life to personal life that's something i'm working on for sure but i just don't want to center a relationship if it's not mutually benefiting the both of us i'd rather be alone working on my crafts and being happy than to be stuck with someone who chooses to be negative and codependent and that's what this relationship kind of was i wasn't benefiting from this at all at first i was you know typically relationships start off really great and people you know hide a lot of their flaws and so i thought this person was really great at first over time i realized that i that me and this person weren't very compatible they were unhealthy this person was just not a very nice person and so they ended up harassing me a lot i got a lot of emails and texts and calls from all these different numbers and so i included pieces of the email and so it says this is from that person please if you're gonna destroy it for good let me know why until i know that your convictions are valid i won't quit and it'll be uneasy for both of us i will keep on trying to contact you and it will keep hurting and that was very annoying to me because it's like i don't think you need to over explain yourself when you're doing something that's right for you of course i told them why i was leaving i was very open with them i try to have a civil you know healthy conversation and they weren't trying to hear it so i ended up having to block them seize contact they wouldn't stop contacting me i at that point i feel like it's not really my responsibility to take care of someone after a breakup and i was telling that person i was like hey i can't be the person to help you through this i have to move on with my life so i ended up having to get a restraining order which was also very scary that was like a first in my life having to go to court and all this stuff so basically this is me just responding to the email very tired it's like i'm tired i'm tired i'm bored I just don't want any part of this and I wished that I could just, you know, I think they handled this was a little immature for their age and I'm 30 years old, okay? That kind of stuff is so immature and it gave me the ick so I channeled all of that into the zine to sort of vent about how draining I thought that person was. I think that's way too old to be taking, like, to not be taking care of yourself and expecting someone else to do it. So I ended up channeling it and then channeling it even more. This is the centerfold, I think. Oh no, it's not. I think... This is the centerfold. So centerfold means when you open it to the center and it's like one sheet of paper. So this is the centerfold. That means we're halfway through the zine and I'm still channeling it. These are songs that remind me of you in a bad way. <laughs> so if you guys wanna listen to this playlist, I actually love all these songs a lot, but it kind of reminded me of that person. This is actually just quotes that I saw online or on TikTok that I really liked because I thought it could relate to a lot of what I was feeling during this time. So it's not necessarily just that ending of the relationship, but just the patriarchy and how women are expected to center men in their lives and how sometimes we take on that burden because of the patriarchy. And I've, I've definitely been guilty of that and had to learn or actually unlearn all of that. This was me just kind of doubling down because at this point, I mean, I've been through a lot of breakups, but this one was just the most annoying because I'm like, okay, I am not confused. I'm not, <laughs> I don't I don't need closure. I'm really done with this. I don't want this. 
And so that's what some of these quotes just kind of relate to. And then this is the end here. It's just signs they may be manipulating you, a checklist. And this is just stuff I've learned over the years. Definitely grown a lot. I really don't tolerate this kind of stuff anymore, but this was just something that came up with some friends after talking about it. And I was like, oh, a lot of people don't realize when they're being manipulated or when someone's attempting to deceive them. So I tried putting in some stuff that definitely I could just sense from people immediately that I thought may help someone that's reading the zine. And that's it. And for September, this is what I think of your opinion of me, mini zine. And this mini zine is sort of a continuation of the drama from my breakup from July. <laughs> and mind you, I don't partake in the drama, you know? Maybe I did a little bit. Maybe I was a little petty at some parts, but it was because my ex and his friends were trying to gang up against me and make me feel bad about my decisions. And I respond to that childish behavior by blocking people like that. And I actually changed my number. You know, I don't have time for that. I really, I just really don't want to tolerate it. I just want to focus on my art, focus on my work, focus on my community, my family. And some of those people really tried me. So this zine was created to vent same same as any other zine that i make it's just getting all of the negative emotions out and things that you know if i don't speak to the person and resolve it because in that instance i didn't care to resolve it i don't care for those people but the emotions still linger you know i'm human i'm not that above being annoyed by people they really tried it so <laughs> i was just venting i was like i don't want to deal with that but I ended up making the zine with grid paper, stamps, and dictionary paper. It's a picture of me. I just printed it out onto some old dictionary paper that I found. And then I collaged it with the grid paper. And then these are stamps that I, I have like individual lettered stamps and just stamped the title. I thought it was really cute. And this is what I think of people's opinions of me. <laughs> Even when they try me, I'm just like, you really thought you ate. You really thought you ate that, huh? And then I made this, the back says love Brie, and then I didn't think about it again. I moved on. It's a great way for me to be able to channel those emotions and be able to express myself when I don't want to partake in negativity. So I thought this was a very good way to channel that. So if you're going through something similar and you don't want to fight, you don't want to argue because you just don't care, I think making a zine is a great way to channel and get all those excess negative emotions out because, you know, sometimes it will linger with you. We're not all above drama. We're not all above pettiness. So this was really fun to make. People always ask me about the stamps. These are the stamps that I have and they're a bunch of single lettered stamps and I get these from Michaels. And now we're in the month of October. It's called You Kinda Suck, issue number four. I'm so proud of this zine. It is the final installment of my zine series, You Kinda Suck. And if you don't know about my zine series, You Kinda Suck, it's just a series that I've been making since I think 2017 or 2018. And I made the first issue back then. And it was when I was very insecure, lost, not happy with where I was in my life. So I made that zine to express my discontent with my circumstances. And like I keep saying, I kind of use my Persians as a public diary and I'm okay sharing it. Sometimes I'm not, sometimes I, after I share it, I, I freak out and I'm like, oh my God, why did I do that? But a lot of times I enjoy doing it because people say they can relate to it and it helped them create their own zine like this which I think is great. I think that's amazing. So I'll keep doing it. I'll keep sharing my diaries. But this year I decided to retire the zine because I no longer feel the need to complain like that. You know, I've learned that I actually do have a lot of control over the course of my life and I've gained so much confidence through the years by just diving deep into my faith and my spirituality. So after six or so years of using this zine series to kind of just feel sorry for myself, I use this last issue to forgive everyone, including myself. I, I this is just my personal view on it, but I think it's very easy to be the victim. Over time, I realized that I also had some part in my pain. You know, not to victim blame or anything, I'm just saying. There's been a lot of instances where I allowed disrespect, I let people walk all over me, just lie to me and all this stuff knowing 
that I'm allowing this to happen instead of putting an end to it, you know? Of course, those people should be honest and not hurt people, but there's also a side of me that was allowing the toxic cycles to continue. So now at 30 years old, I found my voice and my power. So this zine is sort of like a graduation. I didn't want to make it anymore. <laughs> like I just felt like complaining so much or feeling guilty about stuff or not moving on from things. It benefits no one not even myself it doesn't benefit me either just ruminating in that negative energy is not good so this was the culmination of all that pain all that drama and it's like oh okay i can choose to be happy i can i can be upset or i can learn to have this radical acceptance and submit to the things that are happening in my life not in a defeatist way or hopeless kind of way but just kind of like okay this is happening how can i approach this and how can we pivot how can we use this for growth why is this happening for me? Instead of this is happening to me, it's like, okay, how is this happening in my benefit? And that's what You Kind of Suck number four kind of summarizes in the whole series. And this is the master copy as well. You can see that I use some washi tape. I got this from Michaels too. I really love going to Michaels for all my <laughs> craft supplies. And the master copy has a lot of post-it notes, a lot of tape really big on the tape I guess and I collage with like crossword puzzles and stuff like that you could also see my handwriting in there I have like a little schedule that I it was like the last piece of paper on my little desk schedule so I ended up using it for the zine a lot of <laughs> a lot of tape it's very glossy but the zine just pretty much gets it all out of my system for the last time and not to say that I'll never complain again and you know never make a zine that is about me being angry, but I think a lot of the focus on those zines of you kind of suck, all the issue one, two, three, and some of four is using it to be mad at everybody and to point fingers, you know? But this one is like, you know what? I also have <laughs> some flaws. I also have some growing to do and using that to kind of say goodbye to self-defeatism or saying goodbye to drama, you know? more grid paper. really love the grid paper. I found this at Daiso, which is a Japanese dollar store. Everything there is like $1.50. So if you're interested in finding more craft supplies and you live in California, because I, I don't know if there's Daisos in other states, but I live in California and they have Daisos everywhere. So that's where I get a lot of stuff too. Some more collaging, a lot of stickers. That's big in zine world stickers stamps a lot of black and white too a lot of people so for this scene there's like 36 pages i'm not really sure how many pages there are but to be more cost effective or more accessible i offer copies in color and then i also offer black and white copies because it costs less so that's something you can do too if you're on a budget or something but you want to make your zine available and you can't afford to just give it out for free you could sell it a lot more cheaply if you print it all in black and white so just a tip A lot of writing so i think there's a very good balance in the zine of images color and text it's not too text heavy it's not too picture heavy or image heavy i think there's a good mix of both more stuff more stuff and this was for the month of october we're almost to the end so for november i actually have a flexagon that i can hold and show you guys like the raising arizona flexagon this is the same exact type of fold where you fold it to reveal different parts of itself and this is yet another zine club exclusive so they were able to get instead of a zine or per zine they got these flexa zines so just to avoid confusion this is called a flexagon but i call my flexagons flexa zines last time i'm gonna say that i just don't want anybody to get confused but every month i give my zine club per zines usually because i really love being able to share aspects of my life but i wanted to do something different for november so i asked my zine club what kind of zine they would want for me and they voted for a flexagon so i ended up making this cute one to match up with the vibes of november i just want to say i personally don't celebrate thanksgiving for a lot of reasons but it is a time where i get together with my family and we catch up so i thought that this thanksgiving flexagon would be nice for my supporters and a lot of them said that they really enjoyed it and that <laughs> someone even said they use it as a paper fidget toy which i think is so cute 
and I guess I can walk you through it. So it says, what's all the commotion? We got another holiday to worry about. It seems Thanksgiving day is upon us. I haven't even finished my Halloween candy. <laughs> these, these are not complicated to make, but they are very time consuming. So only a hundred of these exist for my zine club. I had some left over. I think I had like two or three left over. So that's how I'm able to show you this one, but it was a lot of work to make these, but it was so worth it to be able to give back to the people who support what I do. And there's a lot of people in my zine club that have been there since the very beginning and never left. You know, I've had my zine club two years now and there's more than half of the people that are in there have been there since the beginning. So I was like, you know what? A little extra work taking like two or three days to make all of these is worth it because they're supporting this. They're supporting what I do. So I wanted to give them something a little bit more interactive and something that's a little bit outside of myself. So instead of just sharing <laughs> all my, you know, life stories and, and what I learn and my growth and everything, I was like, okay, let's have something fun now. And that's when I made the Flexagon for them. So that catches us up to the current month of December 2023 and I have yet to make a zine so I don't have a zine to show you yet. However, I do want to use this time to encourage you all to read zines about Palestine. You know, being a zine maker, I have a responsibility to continue in the tradition of uplifting marginalized voices. And so do you. If you're a zine maker and you love zines, that's what zines are all about. And right now, the people in Gaza are experiencing the most traumatizing strip of independence I think our generation has seen thanks to social media. And as a Black and Polynesian woman, I completely empathize with the Palestinians fighting for liberation. You know, my people have been through slavery, segregation, oppression, profiling, racism, and continue to experience hardship right here in America. And I know a lot of my viewers can relate to that as well. Whether you're Black and Polynesian or not, no matter who you are, I'm sure you can relate to that being in America. And I don't, do not support the fact that my American government is using my tax dollars to fund this atrocious act of violence against the people in Palestine. And I think it's important to share their stories. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's time to educate yourself and what better way to do that than through zines. Many people may not know that Palestine has been demonstrating and protesting for the last 75 years against Israel's occupation. So the lovely people over at Black Zine Archive have put together zines and resources for anyone who wants to educate themselves on the history of Palestine. Please remember that zines were birthed for this very reason, to get messages, information, and perspective out there for everyone to see and change the world. Zines are about revolting against oppression. They're about using your voice to help the voiceless and critical thinking of mainstream media. They're the exact opposite of magazines. They're not trying to sell you anything, you know, like as in material things. They are here to open your mind and to help uplift marginalized people and people that feel like they have nowhere else to go or they feel pigeonholed by mainstream traditional print. So as zine makers, we have a duty to express ourselves, to cite the facts, and to push back against status quo and raise our concerns. But remember, also remember, we can do all of this while still maintaining respect for everyone. So be kind to everybody, but I encourage you to share with intentions of love and care. Share to enlighten others and to uplift others, never to put anyone down. Always share with intentions of love and care. Always, always remember that. If you guys wanna read any of these zines and resources, that the Black Zine Archive have put together. It's available in the link in my description. I think the zines will really enlighten you. They definitely have enlightened me and I encourage everyone to please check that out the month of December. Just please do your part in educating yourself and you know, read everything and then form your own decisions. You know, I'm not pushing any certain thing on anyone. I'm putting the information out there for you to read. I definitely stand with Palestine. That's my stance. I stand with Palestine. I'm against genocide. That's what I believe in, but definitely check out all those zines and resources, read about everything. And and always remember to be kind to each other. All right, so that concludes our zine tour of 2023. I hope some of my zines could give you some zine ideas and inspiration. Make sure to leave a comment telling us your zine plans for 2024. I'm really, really excited to see what the new year has in store for zine making all over the world. I really hope more people get into it. I definitely saw in 2023 that a lot of people were getting interested in zines. So I hope that today this enlightened anybody that was curious about zines. If you wanna see more stuff, check out my page. I have so much stuff about zines. Thank you guys so much for rocking with me today and until next time. Bye!